Hey everyone, so I'm starting to notice that more and more people are becoming comfortable with asking me why I have such short hair as my hair moves from that awkward five o'clock shadow stage into the awkward fuzzy head stage. I think it's because most people when they see someone with no hair at all, um, or it's just that, you know, five o'clock shadow awkward stage, they automatically assume that the person is sick or that maybe they have some kind of disease or they're just that odd delinquent in the crowd that has decided to shave their heads. And so for all intents and purposes, they're just not normal. I don't understand either. But I think that's what keeps people away from that and keeps from asking. Um, but as I've noticed is as my hair is getting longer and as it looks as though something happened and now we're coming out of it, more and more people are coming comfortable with asking about it. Uh, just the other day, I had this couple come up to me, and we were uh, talking, and we were doing stuff at work, and the wife walked away for a little bit. Well, the husband then immediately turned around to me. He goes, my wife has been staring at your head for the last couple minutes. He goes, and she keeps asking me, he goes, before we approached you, what could possibly be wrong with her? And goes, and I kept telling her, honey, just because she has no hair doesn't mean that she's sick. Um, he goes, so he then asked me why I have no hair. And I explained to him that I'm doing this fundraiser. I'm raising $5,000 for the American Cancer Society. And that I decided to shave my head for my loved ones that have passed away and that are still fighting this disease. So when I explained this to him, he goes, see, that's what I told her. I told her that not everybody loses their hair. He goes, if they're sick. He goes, I mean, look at me. I didn't lose my hair when I had chemo. And I mean, my heart just kind of stopped. It was like, what? <laughs> and that's when I was kind of reminded, oh, yeah, that's right. We all have our stories, even if we can't see it anymore, which is something that I've been thinking about a lot lately about like what's going to happen after my hair grows back, but I'm going to save that video for tomorrow um, or for another day. Uh, kind of just want to have a little more time on my hands. But yeah, I mean, other than that, though, I had a moment <laughs> yesterday where I kind of stuck my foot in my mouth. Uh, I was at work. I was in the back and I had this one coworker who I just... I've always felt like I've been rubbed the wrong way by them. They're just one of those people that comes across as just being very angry at the world. And I don't like that kind of energy to begin with. But I was like, you know what, I'll give them a chance. But I just, the energy's just not there. Um, and I just couldn't understand it. We hardly ever have, like, similar shifts. And we're never in the same department. So I have never time to, like, actually talk to them and get to know them. Excuse me. Um, but luckily I did have a chance to yesterday it kind of wiped away all of my preconceived notions about them, which is kind of funny because that's what people have been doing to me. Um, but we were, uh, he came into the break room and like very quietly was just like, I just want to let you know that I think what you did was awesome. And I was like, Oh, well, thank you. You know, this first, like more than five words that he said to me in the entire couple of weeks that I've been here. Um, usually it's always something very angry that I overhear him saying, and he turns around and he's like, yeah, he goes, um, he's like, you know, it's a terrible disease. He goes, God only knows if, you know, this tumor in my brain is going to kill me. And everything just kind of froze around me. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I said, y you have cancer? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, I've got cancer. He goes, I've got a tumor in my brain. He goes, it's right behind my eye. He goes, it's in a spot where they could operate, but if they do, I'll just bleed out or I'll lose my eye. And right now we're just trying chemo and then we're going to do radiation. And that's when, you know, yeah, with the couple, I was reminded that, yeah, we've all got our stories, but having this kind of just kind of hit me all at once, just reminding me of saying, oh yeah, this is why I'm doing this. This is for people that are going through their quiet struggles without their family or their friends or, you know, not everybody has to know what's going on behind a closed door. And so obviously now we're having a much better rapport at work because now we can actually talk about this and, or I can at least understand him better and where he's coming from. And I at no point should have, you know, put my preconceived notions onto him and just assume that he was a very angry person. Well, maybe there's a reason why they're angry. Um... And so I just encourage you guys to think about that, you know, during your day-to-day -day lives that, you know, rather than assume, because this is something that I'm also learning, uh, rather than assume, 
that someone's a certain way because of a certain reason. You never know until you actually put yourself in their shoes. So, that's it. Have a good night.